<laughs> Good morning. It's Thursday. Welcome to the Don and Karen show. <laughs> we, we were just talking about how we did not ever intend to do that in our lives. Um, <laughs> there was a, once in a while we get people asking us, you know, oh, you should play for church or you should care, or you should sing for church. <clears throat> and um, we're already up front enough in things that I've always said, other people can do this. And, uh, and so, you know, we want other people to be involved. And uh, now here, here we are because of the COVID, um, the two of us uh, doing a daily show here. <laughs> but it's, uh, I hope, I hope it doesn't become a show. Uh, that's not what we want to do, and we're not trying to show off stuff. We do do different things, or try to do different things with the music, just because we. Uh, this is, this is playing. This is fun. Um, we enjoy God's word in music and the expression of our faith in music. It's really awesome to to be able to do, and to do together. That's really a blessing. Um, and uh, I hope that this isn't, I mean, it's a little bit like preaching because I'm talking and you're not. Um, though if you're like me, you might be yelling at the screen. <laughs> That's not what that means. <laughs> um, but we just, uh, just to share God's word with you and to, just to reflect for the day, say, you know, what's, what can I take away? What is, uh, what is God saying in this for me? I hope that that's that kind of a blessing for you. So uh, we're going to open up with uh, a beautiful um, 18th century hymn, Just As I Am Without One Plea. And, uh, and I'm going to take it, I'm going to try to take it slow because a lot to think about here. Just reflect on it. Just as I am with without one plea, but that my thy blood was shed for me, and that Thou bidst me come to Thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark lot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot O Lamb of God I come I come just as I am though tossed about with man and fears within, without, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am, poor, wretched, blind, sight, rich as he Just as I am, thy love on 
Boy, we could stop right there. That's really something. What do you look at? What do you see when you look in a mirror? Um, a fat old man? Failure? A, uh, an old woman with wrinkles? Do you see teeth that aren't straight? Oh, I don't like that, such and such. Oh, that bothers me. Do you see hair that, oh, can never be right. I can never get that right. Do you see somebody who looks attractive on the outside, but you look in the mirror and, and you see something something else you're aware of, something that troubles you. We look at ourselves, uh, I'll confess, frankly, I think that, I think that people who look in the mirror and see someone there, you know, feel really good about, really proud of, I think that's a bit of a psychopath. That's a little, that, maybe that's no wrong term. That's a, that's a narcissist. That's a, that's, that's a person who's dishonest with himself. Because we're all, we're all aware that we put on a bit of a, a bit of a show for others. We're aware of our own problems and failures and sins, and we don't we don't necessarily think well of ourselves. Paul says, "Nobody should think too highly of themselves, but rather look at themselves and see themselves with." Uh, I can't remember the phrase he uses. Sober judgment. Sober judgment. Thank you. So, so we're in Luke 15, and it doesn't talk about your your image in a mirror or anything like that. But but that's in here, uh, verse eight. What woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, doesn't light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, "Rejoice with me, for I found the coin that I had lost." Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is a little bit of a puzzle. A coin? I mean, do you, when was the last time you searched the house for a lost coin? I suppose if you were, like, desperate for cash, you might have gone through the couch cushions looking for lost coins. But, but if you, you know, the, I, it used to be, when I was a little kid, if I found a penny on the sidewalk, I'd pick it up. Now I'm not sure it's worth bending over to get it. Uh, a penny? Uh, I throw my coins in a drawer, you know, that they're just in the way. Uh, even, even understanding this is a silver coin and it was worth, we're talking uh, one day's wages. Well, if, if in the previous parable we talked about yesterday, one sheep out of a hundred is one percent, then what's one day's wages out of 365? Uh, it's not it's not the end of the world, right? If that's one coin lost. On the other hand, it depends on what coin it is. She has 10 silver coins. This may well have been her dowry, or may in fact have been a necklace, uh, uh, jewelry that she wore at her wedding. So, speaking of value, this is Karen's engagement ring, and I we were trying to remember uh, as we were getting ready this morning how much I paid for this. I think it was about between 150 and 200 bucks. <laughs> it was not a lot of money. It is not. Um, we we were pretty poor, and then uh, that, that was basically all the money I had at the time. Um, so it doesn't have a whole lot of earthly value. If you took this to a pawn shop or a, or a jewelry shop, they wouldn't give you very much for it. But what's it worth? If the, if this little diamond falls out of the setting, uh, and it's in the carpet here someplace, what do you think we'd be doing? 
we'd be here with flashlights uh, looking for the glimmer, and we would, we would be on our hands and knees searching for it. I'd take the plumbing apart if it went down the sink. Because it has meaning beyond its price. What do you see when you look in the mirror? What are you worth? The materials that, that go to make up your body worth, uh, I've read various things, 10 to $20, something like that, of chemicals that make you up. Uh, and you have value maybe because of the work you do, you have some skill, you got a degree, you have you know, uh, knowledge that you can sell, but that, that reaches a sell-by date, a, a freshness date, and all of a sudden that's gone too. You retire, do you have worth anymore? Uh, you have value because you have some strength, you know, and honey, can you open this jar? Or, or uh, boy, dear, would you fix this for supper? Uh, you have these skills or you can do these things for others. But when you lose that skill, when you are sick, when you're weak, if you have any kind of handicap, are you worth anything? What are you worth? Where does your value come from when you look in the mirror? This says, she called her neighbors together saying, Look, I found a coin. The coin I had lost, I found it. And she rejoices. Jesus says, Just so I tell you, there's joy before the angels of God. The angels in heaven rejoice over one reprobate, one loser, one, one person that the people around them would say, Boy, what a bum. One person who turns back in faith to Christ and has life again. All of heaven rejoices. They, the angels rejoice over your faith and your love for Jesus Christ because you are precious to your heavenly Father. And the price, the price God paid was his only son for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for, for the price you paid for us, for the value that you set upon us. In and of ourselves, we have little or no value at all. But because of you, we rejoice with this, with this woman and her coin, we rejoice that you have found us. Father, grant that we may see ourselves in that light today. Grant that we may see others also in that light. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace.